All right, so today uh, I'm fixing a snow globe that I found at the thrift store. I'm gonna give it to my daughter. So hopefully she doesn't see this video before Christmas. But anyway, uh, I, I, it's kind of a special little snow globe because it's a, you know, obviously a Disneyland with the old school Mickey and Minnie Mouse, okay? Now this little snow globe is uh, in perfect condition because the water's not all stale or anything. But the music box doesn't work. So that's what I'm going to fix today. I'm going to fix the music box. So I've never done one of these before. I have uh, done some clockworks before. And I'm imagining this is probably like the clockworks because there is a tension spring in here that this winds in, that it, it uh, doesn't allow it to ratchet back. So the tension spring. And then there's the, uh, there's the oscillator in there. And then there's a, there's a, there's a little piece that, that spins around to regulate how fast the movement of the music box works. So, uh, you know, I, I've had a little bit of exposure to some clockwork, so I'm gonna just give it a shot and see if I can get this to work. Now, there are replacement mechanisms also, but, uh, you know, uh, and I did find one that has this theme song, but I, I'd rather just try to fix this one because that's what came with the music box. Looks like it's not a super high-end one because it's, uh, it's nickel-plated. Uh, not a gold plated, uh, or not a, uh, a uh, not a brass uh, works in here. So you know, pretty cheap little thing made in China. You know, uh, these two screws here are for the actual music box itself. And then I'm imagining if I get these guys off, uh, that's probably how I get to pull the bottom of this out. So. I'm going to have to fudge around with it for a little while here and then figure it out, but I'll come back on camera once I figure that out. Oh yeah, and I did want to get into the, uh, into the symptoms that I've discovered just up front here, okay? So when I turn this, you know, it does try to turn. It looks like it's a little bit cocked, so it probably it probably was dropped or something, you know, that dented it. Now, when I originally tried to twist it, see how it wants to go backwards? This 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 wind up is not supposed to be able to push back in there. So I'm thinking maybe the clockwork part of it came out. This the clock spring it came off of its anchor, but when I try to to turn it. It, uh, it doesn't stay wound, it wants to keep on, keep trying to unwind itself. So if I get in there, I'm probably just gonna, more than likely what's gonna happen is I'm gonna probably just try to, uh, what I'm gonna probably have to do to fix it is to anchor the clock spring, because that's probably what came loose out of this thing. So uh, I'll, uh, as again, I'll try to take it apart and figure it out before I come back on camera. Okay, so after pulling out uh, every tool I had, including a, a heat gun. Um, what I discovered was that this base piece that holds the music box in here is actually put on with a very light adhesive. So uh, I just got a little, you know, piece of tape or like a, a tape roll here. That way I can put the globe in there. And then all that's really required is that you just kind of stick a a uh, jeweler sized screwdriver in here and then just kind of work your way around it and eventually the adhesive you see here here it's coming off loose here the, eventually the adhesive will come off because it's a very light duty adhesive so uh, you know, like I said I don't put a lot of technology into these things see that part's popping off here just got to kind of work your way around it and eventually it will pop out of there in fact, I think it just moved. Yeah, you could, I could hear it coming loose. So very light duty adhesive. So what I'm gonna put it in there is gonna be a light duty adhesive also, but I'm gonna clean off the, uh, clean off the remnant of the old adhesive. And I'm trying not to put too much pressure on the outside because I don't know how this is. I guess this is solid plastic, but I don't know 
know how rugged it is. And it looks like now it's coming off. Just kind of work your way around it. You just got to be very, very careful about you know how you do it because you don't want to you don't want to chip the outside housing part of it because then it'll just ruin the cosmetic value of the music or of the uh, the globe or whatever you're working on, whatever you're getting this out of. So it looks like it just came off. And there it is. So that's how you get this out of here. Now this is a, uh, from what I can gather, this is a probably an 18 tone music box. It might be, a, they make these in specific tones, like 12, 18, you know, so on and so forth. So that's what, that's how they specify them. So what I'm going to probably end up having to do is getting into the key works here. Yeah, look, this is what happened. This piece here actually came up here. So if I can cinch this down or figure out a way to get this cinched down, uh, this, this is what's going on. The clock spring like I suspected. So I'll come back on camera once I've analyzed it. Okay, so since this since this piece came up, here it is, okay. Since that piece came up, uh, there was actually some pieces that were attached to this. So that would include the oscillator, okay, and a gear. So uh, once I get that put back in there, this it's gonna hold these pieces in place. So that's actually what happened. It came, it came loose and then these pieces shot out. I didn't realize those pieces fell out of the housing once I pulled the the uh, the mechanism out, but that's what happened. So uh, I'll put those back together when I have, uh, well, I've got a light here, but I, I don't want to work here at night. So I'll get it all back together, and then I'll show you how it goes back together. So just so you can see it a little bit better, uh, this is the piece that this, this housing here needs to be pressed up against the the metal piece, plastic gets metal, and there's actually a little uh, anchor for this loop here to catch on to, and apparently what must have happened, it must have got dropped, hit this part here, the wind-up part, and then pushed the spring mechanism up. Also, if you look at it, the, uh, the winding, the center of the spring winding, the center anchor, got pushed it's actually out of register with this hole here so when i when i put it back together i'm going to squeeze it i'm going to have to push the spring back into the housing and that's going to have to go back into there and everything should go back together it actually should press back together because this naturally here has a split here just so that uh, it can be pressed on as this side does here so i'm imagining if i push it back on it should go back together i'm not sure if it will so if it doesn't and if it doesn't stay what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to I'm probably going to bind this with some with a piece of wire just kind of go across here and just make sure it's secure also the pieces that I talked about which I mentioned the oscillator it's actually not an oscillator it is a this is used to turn it's a it's a counter rotate or it's a, it's a rotating mechanism that regulate it's a regulator okay it regulates how fast the spring in here unwinds otherwise if you didn't have this this spring would just go so fast and it would just go as fast as it possibly could and the song would be regulated so you'd hear a really fast version of the song as it was going through and it would have nothing to slow it down so that's what this is for here okay and this is the screw I mean, that's a screw. This is the gear that actually turns that and makes that happen. That's the gear. The gear drives off of there. This, uh, that's the big part, you know, that turns the, the screw right here. It's kind of a worm drive. And then that turns this, okay? So, I'm going to put this into the, uh, Put this into a vise. Oh, I kind of got, uh, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part off.
it actually twists off. I'm going to put it into a vise and I'm going to squeeze it. It's kind of tricky here. I might, I might actually have to take this out of here. So I'm going to take it out of here and then I'm going to do it. And I'm going to squeeze it in here. I'm going to put some pressure on here and then I'm going to push this spring back in using a pair of needle nose pliers just so I can get that back into registry. Okay. And since I don't have three hands, the vice is the easiest thing to use. So if you have a third head, you know, by all means do it. But you actually kind of need to have three heads to do this. So I'll come back on camera once I have it set up. All right, so now I'm going to uh, take the take the mechanism off the base. So originally I thought that these unscrewed and then you know everything came out, but these are actually just formed into this plastic piece, so they don't actually come off. They're they're part of it. So. These little screws here, there actually should be three of them. One's missing, so I don't know if somebody messed with this thing before. These little guys come off here with a tiny screwdriver. Uh, you know, if you're going to put this back in here, remember that this part here, which is the part for the wind-up mechanism, goes through that hole. You're not going to really forget that because that's the only way it can go back together. That. Okay, so you can see the underside of the mechanism there, by the way. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and clamp this in this vise here, and hopefully I'm going to get some good pressure. Uh, I've got this little piece coming through here, so I've got to try to get this in the clamp to where it's not going to be... Oh yeah, there we go, we're good, okay. It's kind of tricky uh, because of... I'll probably do it like this. So you can kind of see I'm starting to mesh it together. So what I have to do is I have to push that back in there. As I squeeze this. It's actually a little bit tricky to do that. But this puts constant pressure on there, you know, when I'm doing it, so. gradually I think gradually I can get it to squeeze together I don't want to put a lot of pressure on it because I don't want to break any pieces so I'm gonna mess with this for a little while and I'll come back on camera once I know I got it so it's kind of a concert I got to do this and then I've got to put these pieces back into here so they can snap back into their receptacle. Although I think once it's snapped back in place, I could probably lift this part, this tab up a little bit, and then put those pieces in. So I'll come back on camera once I figure that out. So it turns out that the easiest way to get the spring to go back in there is to actually wind it up. So I've got this little guy on here. I have to wind it and then I have to register the cap stand with this hole here. So I've got to wind it just enough to get that spring. See what? See how the spring it winds in this direction? It actually winds and then the spring gets tighter in the housing. And then when the spring comes unwind, it goes from being you know something that's really tight like that to unwinding and going to the edges of the housing. That's what's preventing me from being able to push this, uh, this spring back into housing. And my anchor is, uh, it looks like my, my anchor is out of register here too. Anyway, once I get that wound around, it, it'll bring it back, back to itself. So let me just go ahead and give it a couple of winds. Okay, you can kind of see how that anchor went back. Anyhow, all right, so see how it went back? Anyway, if you wind it, the spring gets tighter. If it's anchored, the this, this spring's gonna be able to wind. If it's not anchored, it's gonna keep rolling around in there and never stop. So what I've gotta do is I've gotta catch that tab that was here originally and get it to anchor and then 
I'll be able to wire that spring effectively. So uh, anyway, I got to get this guy back in here. So let me try to push it back into place there. Now, you don't ever want to really push too hard if your fingers are there. So just got to kind of Going to kind of get it to register. You can see the cap stand right there. Anyway, once I get that to register there, I can start to move the housing to where it's. Uh, ah, there's my spring back. Okay, I can move the housing to where it's going to sit around there that I can squeeze it tight. So let me just kind of work on that and then see what I can do to get that going. It's real close right now. So, and I think I've got the spring wound just enough. Well. Let me try to wind it a little bit more. Yeah, it just it just takes a little bit. Of, you don't want to have it too wound because what's going to happen is the spring's going to want to move around in there. So I think I can get it to go now. Ah, there we go. I think I got it. This this is the tough part here is getting that to wind up, getting that to the center. I think I can probably get that with this possibly. Uh, it's just so close. Anyway, object is to get this centered here. Okay, so I did finally get this to register in a hole here. See that little piece right there? So that's that's the top hole there for the uh, for the housing. And once I got it to do that, it snapped right back together. I was able to push this part back over the, the anchor here. Spring's still in there. Here's the anchor for the spring. I've got to actually pull that out. I'm going to have to get a finer set of needle nose pliers. I'll get a finer set of needle nose pliers. I'll pull it out this way. Pull it, you know, this is the anchor part right here. So I pull, I pull that T-tab back out through here, and then it'll be anchored so the spring can wind, and then uh, everything will be good. So... You can kind of see the way it's you know, put together there. Now, the next part is, is I'm going to have to put my little, you know, my little pieces in here. The gear drive goes here, okay, and then the, uh, the other piece goes here. That's the, ti that's the timing. That limits how fast that can unwind. So... Uh, it's not called the oscillator. I forget what I called it earlier, but that's the correct term. Anyway, I'll be back on camera once I'm ready to do that. You can kind of see it from the top here with those pieces missing. So I'll be back on camera. Okay, so I've clamped the, uh, the musical works into the vise again now. So I took the key off of it, the winding key off of it, clamped it into the vise. As you can see, it's back onto its uh, anchor over here. Uh, the gears that I have to put in, I have to put one gear into it. So this is a gear drive here, okay? So it's got uh, one gear that goes against the main gears and then the other gear that goes against the regulator gear. It meshes just like that, okay? So that means that this piece here has to be lifted up a little bit so I can snap this into place. And I'm going to put this into place also. So as you can see... The, this gear has a small gear here and a large gear here. The large gear is what what goes against the uh, the regulator. So, got it back in place here. And this gear, right here, I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, that gear is what turns the small gear. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to snap it back into place. Uh, since it's all apart, I've gotta I've got to kind of angle it in because it's got to go into its tine. Uh, let me see here if I could if I could get a little bit tighter shot on that so you can see what's going on. All right, so these little forks right here, the these parts here, this uh, pinion part of this gear slides into those. Okay, that's what actually holds it in, and. When, when it's all together, this will hold this in place. I don't know if you can see that. This will hold this in place. So 
Let me just try to, there we go. Okay, I was able to wedge it. Now I'll just kind of move it. It's going to use my little, there we go. Okay, so now this is back in place. And I've got to get the, uh, the regulator in here. So there is a there is a hub for that right there. The trick is getting this this part into the the plastic part without actually bending the plastic part too much and uh, let's see if it can be done just use a screwdriver just try to wedge it should be able to wedge it and just push it in place there and there we go I think we have it yeah it's back in place so now it's back together so what I'm going to do after this step is I'm going to test it to see if it all works and it does appear that this is yep it is in place the gears are turning All right, so it is back together. You can see it right there. I'm gonna go ahead and wind it up and see if it works. So uh, I'll come back on camera once I've verified that. That's right, I forgot. I still have to anchor the spring within the housing here because remember that, that anchor for the spring. So let me just try to grab that. I'm gonna try to grab that with this really fine pair of needle nose here. And uh, hopefully I can get that to go. If not, I'll probably have to, uh, well, no, I've got to try to grab it. So, man, that's going to be tight. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out a clever way to dra grab that and come back on camera once I've done that. All right, so it's a little bit of a process to get that spring to, to register in here. So I think I figured it out. <laughs> So I put it in a in the vise. It's clamped someplace where it's not going to uh, impinge upon any of the mechanics. Okay, just and I did that just to hold it. And now what I'm going to do is the tab comes up here. So I just kind of once I get the tab here, it's this this piece here pushing against the spring is going to stop it. And then I'm going to lift it out with this knife here. This knife is the only fine pointed thing I could get in there. Now the reason it's clamped together, th this actually might try to, to wedge apart, but I'll, once I get it anchored, I'll push it back together and hopefully the works won't fall out of there. Otherwise I have to start the whole process over again. So let's just go ahead and try this. Okay, now you can see, the, you can see part of the spring, the, the tab part coming up. Oops, it just went past. Okay, you gotta do it again. It takes two turns to get for me to get this right where it needs to be. Okay, there's there's that part. So now I'm just gonna take this guy, try to wedge it up. Uh, boy, that is tough. All right, and you can see it's coming apart here. There's a lot of pressure in there. Let's try to do that one more time. Okay, I, I hope you can, I hope this is making sense, but. All right, there's, there's the, the, uh, the part that needs to anchor up into there. Oh, man. That is tough, tough, tough. I don't want the spring to shoot out of there. That's the whole problem. I 
think I can get it to go. I don't want to stab myself either. That's the part that actually has to go up in there. Uh, well, I, I cannot grab this. It's really, really tough. Uh, and the problem is th these needle nose pliers won't quite grab that either. They won't grab it enough to, for me to pull it up and anchor it up into there. So I'm, I'm going to try to figure out another way and come back. Our Okay, so I was finally able to get the tab out of there. You can see the tab right there. Actually, that might be a better shot of it. See how it's kind of a T there? And it rests up against the, a little window in the, in the winding, you know, where the uh, wind up spring goes. Now, I also put these pieces in here. This is, the, this is the regulator here that regulates the speed that this cylinder moves at. What happens is this regulator is turned by a little gear down there that it can only get up to a certain speed because this is weighted. This probably weighs about, I would say probably 10 times what one of these gears does. So it is, uh, re you know, it regulates itself uh, because of its weight and how much momentum there is. <clears throat> and it actually reg regulates itself to a certain speed so the song plays at the right tempo, okay? Now, what happened when I had it in the vise, this, the combs here actually got moved because I had it viced in there. So what I did was I moved, I unscrewed these and I moved the cones so that they're clearancing. There's gotta be a little bit of a clearance here between the end of the comb and the actual cylinder itself. So that was a problem, it, it actually jammed in there. So I got that all figured out. The way I got this works back in there was I actually had to, I actually had to wedge it and then put the works in there the little gears down on the back there if you could see that and it's all ready to go now so the final result is something that can be wound up now here's the trick to this okay if you have this just sitting in the air like this you're not going to get any sound out of it what it does is it's kind of a it's kind of a uh, sound chamber that it's put into you know it's put in the bottom of the snow globe so once it's on something, you can hear it here, but when it's in the chamber, it's even amplified more. So that's how it works. So thanks for watching the video, and uh, I'm going to put it back in the chamber and seal everything up. Thanks for watching. All right, I, I did want to show it going back into the globe. So what I did was it was missing some hardware, so I went down to the hardware uh, hardware store got some screws these are like I think they're 440s oh they're not 440 they're, they're metric size so it's like M4 uh, I can't remember what the pitch is but anyway I got these screws to put in here okay this guy's got to go to the base so uh, what I do is oh yeah this key comes off I take the key off and then I just uh, there's three screws that mount it on the base. So this is the this is the wind-up mechanism. It goes through one of these holes, just like this, okay? And then you uh, you can see where the where the screw holes are. I just screw it back together, and I attach it to the base. Let me see if it works better on this one here. Yeah, no wonder, I've got it upside down. Okay, so try to get this to go through there. Yeah, that's not the one. It's got to be, it's got to be this one here. They make these to where they're universal and where they can use them for multiple music boxes. Okay, so you can see the screw holes. So I'm going to come back on camera once I have the screws all put in place and then I'll put it back up into the snow globe itself. Okay, so now I have it secured to the base. I put new screws in it because uh, the screw there was only two screws, so I wanted to have all three screws so it'd be stable. The, also, you know, the attachment of this to there is going to uh, reflect on the music quality. You can see a little hole here. That's where the music comes out because it's sealed in this little base here. I've already put the adhesive on here. Uh, I use plyo bond, but you could use like Gorilla Snot. You want to use a a uh, like a an adhesive that 
gives you a flexible bond, so that's why I use, you know, plyo bond. Gorilla Snot will do the same thing for you. Uh, the right variety of that will. Okay. Now I took the uh, the little key off of it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this back on it. Put that back on there. I'm gonna probably use the plyo bond to glue the other label that was that I took off of here earlier too when I disassembled it. So it will give me a flexible hold. It's not gonna be permanent. I'm not gonna rip it apart if I had to open this up again. That's what I want. I want like an original style hold so that if I have to get back into the mechanism, I can get to it easily and not have to worry about destroying any of the parts that are there. That's why I used plyo bond for this. Okay. So now I just kind of grab it here and put it on there. Kind of move it around, I guess. That way it spreads it out a little bit evenly. I don't want the plyo bond to get onto the top part of this, so I'm just going to wipe it off with my fingers. All right, then I'll just let it glue over. To, I'll just let it dry overnight, and everything will be good. It'll be hunky dory. Everything will be going. So I'll probably uh, give you a final beauty shot of it once I once I uh, get it all together and wind it up, just for demonstration purposes. So I'll come on camera once this baby's dried. I think it uh, it probably takes a, a few hours for it to go. So it'll probably be overnight for for me. Okay, so everything's complete. The uh, cement is dry at the bottom there. I actually glued the label on with that rubber cement also, so it looks like it's stock. Now I'm just going to give it a wind here and let it play. And there it is. Alright, so everything's complete and now it's, it's a ready gift for my little girl. Thanks for watching the video.